From a very young age, I always thought that being a doctor was the coolest job ever. I dreamt of wearing a white scrub, examining people and giving a diagnosis, performing surgeries and stitching people back up. At the age of 16, I still think it's the coolest job ever, but now I know what struggles and complications come with the job and how big of an effect it has on your daily life. Do I know everything about the job? No. Will I ever? Maybe once I become one myself. But how do I prepare myself for the excruciating, long, sleepless days of work when I can't even wake up at 7 or stay awake in school for that matter? I've done quite a lot of researching about people's journeys into med schools and the process of becoming a doctor. And the one thing that stuck with me was their thorough determination. They were all passionate despite all obstacles and doubts. They didn't do it for the money because what sane person would pursue medicine for the money when there's so many other easier ways of earning a fortune. But they did it because they were genuinely inspired and driven. In statistics, the acceptance rate into the first year of med school is only about 40%. Pretty low and intimidating if you ask me. However, estimations have shown that about 80 to 90% of all med school students graduate. Sounds odd, but there's a simple system behind it. Getting accepted into med school is a big deal, and it is that way for a reason. They pick out people that have enough stamina and determination, which is heavily required in the medical field. You might be as smart as Albert Einstein, but without enough resilience, you won't make it to the end. And the high graduate rate really shows that the 40% of the chosen are truly capable and worthy of their positions. Doctors work under unrelenting pressure, suffer from severe burnout and undergo sleep deprivation and anxiety, and their profession demands them to put up a brave front. Being fragile simply isn't an option. Ironically, despite their professionalism on the job, estimations have shown that their mental health is long compromised and it has been an area of deep concern for a long time. According to a recent study, the rate of suicides among doctors is higher than in any other profession and is half the general population. So how come the people that we heavily rely on to keep us healthy are so physically and mentally damaged? How come they have dedicated, they dedicate their whole life or half of their life for patients they don't personally know and leave nothing for themselves? Shouldn't doctors be the healthiest and most stable people in order to aid and help others? Because our futures depend on them, on their decisions, their knowledge, their skills, and the least we can do is appreciate them. Think of it this way. You wouldn't want a sick, mentally disturbed and sleep deprived doctor working on your case and, full, and carrying full responsibility for your life. I mean, who would? We expect them to always be 100%, to function like machines while being put under unhealthy pressure and stress and still remain human for us, comfort us, empathize for us, and make us feel better. However, they don't always succeed. There will, they make mistakes and they fail. And the particular reason for this matter is that they're any less of a human than any of us. No matter how skilled a doctor is, there will always be doubts. There will always be complications and the pressure of performing at 100% never drops. Mistakes cannot be made. Now, how realistic does that sound? It's not possible to be perfect in a field where new discoveries are being made every day, where people don't recover from simple, successful surgeries, and where there are diseases that cannot be cured. So why when doctors don't meet their patients' expectations, they get humiliated and shamed? Why do they have to get blamed for things that they have no control over after putting in everything they have? It's never easy. Telling people their loved ones didn't make it isn't easy. Having a patient die on you isn't easy. Receiving negative, undeserved commentary isn't easy. It's hard and it's painful. So why don't we appreciate all stress and pressure they have to put up with for us? All we need to do is show them respect and gratitude. We can't blame them for not being able to change the nature of humans and create an antidote to all diseases and troubles. But what we can do is be patient, be understanding and acceptive of, of what they do and sacrifice for us. 
we have to try and put ourselves into their shoes and let them do their job that they have studied for half of their lives for. Um, we have to give them space and let them do their job. Because if you knew how to repair a broken bone or remove a brain tumor or even perform a kidney transplant, you wouldn't come to the hospital in the first place. So why don't we just give them space and let them do their magic? Thank you.